Y'all, I am so excited for this project. We are finally ready to put both neck construction methods to the test. Now, if you watched the previous video in this series, you saw all of the prep work that we did to get to this point. Both necks have been constructed from the same block of wood. From that block of wood, we even aligned the neck joint to make sure that it's in the same section of the wood. After that, we put them on the CNC machine so that they got shaped in exactly the same way. And just to validate and prove that, we put them on a scale and they were within one gram of the same weight of each other. I think that we have done everything that we possibly can to make sure that our test is as, as scientific of a result as we can possibly get. Now, I think each of you come into this with a firmly held belief about which neck is gonna perform better. I'm excited to see the results to see whether we validate your thinking or not. I think we're ready to test. Let's go do it. One of the things that I think is most interesting about this specific test is that I don't know that I have ever seen a stress load test performed on both neck styles. Uh, I have certainly read a lot of the research and I have looked through a lot of the commentary, but to me, at the end of the day, that's all academic. I want to know what are the real life implications of both construction methods. And so to get there, we're going to have a spreadsheet and we're going to go pound by pound and capture the movement all throughout the load. At the end of that, we'll have charts and graphs to compare both of those neck methods. And I think that as we review and analyze all of those results, that we'll get to a conclusion that will ultimately make all of us better builders. The scarf joint doesn't start right at the nut. It actually starts about an inch and a half or so back. Uh, from that point. Since we're testing the rigidity of the joint, I think it makes sense for us to put our clamp right at the starting point of that scarf. So we're going to put that here. Now when we test the one piece neck, uh, we'll go ahead and measure this exact same distance so we have the same baseline for the test. I just got off the phone with my brother. He had been watching the previous video in this series and his first comment was, dude, you gotta break the necks. We gotta know which one is stronger. And while that would be an interesting test, number one, it breaks my heart a little to purposefully destroy good guitar wood. And two, that's not really the emphasis of what we're testing right now. But what it did do is lead to a conversation around where would we be applying the pressure from. My initial thought was I was just going to use a hook at the very end of the headstock and pull up at that point. But as we dialogued about that, uh, ultimately we came to the conclusion that the right place to do the pressure or apply the pressure from would be from the tuner location. That would be more natural. Uh, and so then it became a question of, well, which, which tuners because you've got you know six tuners there are three sets and so we kind of split the difference and said well, let's just go with the second set of tuners so that's what we did we, we drilled two holes uh, in the headstock and uh, went ahead and custom made a plate so that we could evenly apply the pressure across both of those holes then we measured up to where the third set of tuners would be and drew a line that's the point where we'll take the measurement from that should make for a consistent point of measure so that we get good metrics. So ultimately, it was a good discussion. Shout out to my brother because I, I think that we ultimately will get better results because of that discussion. As we get ready to start applying pressure, I wanted to call attention to two points during the test uh, that I think are gonna be of interest. Uh, we're going to pause at 40 pounds of pressure and then again at 59 pounds of pressure. Both of those numbers are interesting because they represent the two extents of string tension that most are going to install on their guitars. The first is the light gauge uh, set of strings, which averages around 135 pounds of string tension. If we do a little bit of math on the forces of that, we can determine that that 
135 pounds of horizontal pressure will exert a vertical pressure of 39.47 pounds. That's where we're going to round up to just four, an, equal, an even 40 pounds of pressure uh, and take our measurement at that point. Then we're going to keep going up to 59 pounds of pressure. That is the representative of a heavy gauge set of strings. Heavy gauge typically runs around 200 pounds of pressure, uh, and so vertical forces at that point, uh, we're looking at 58.47 pounds of vertical pressure, so we're going to round that up to 59. So those will be the two points where we'll pause and talk about where we are, but we're going to take measurements pound for pound all the way up to both of those points, and then we'll pause and discuss those. First up is the scarf jointed neck. We are set to zero on our dial indicator and we're gonna go pound for pound. So let's start with the first pound. We'll call that nine thousandths. Thousands. Let's speed this up a little bit. I don't want you guys to have to watch every pound. We'll come back at the 40 pounds, but we'll keep going. We'll speed it up. Okay, like we mentioned earlier, this is the point that we wanted to stop and kind of uh, take an assessment of where things are. Based on the measurements so far, we're at 270 thousandths of an inch of movement uh, here in the headstock. So that's you know, a little over a quarter of an inch is where we're at. Um, everything seems to be working the way that we hoped. We're, we're seeing good movement there. Um, the, the numbers are all kind of lining up. Uh, we're seeing a little bit of a gap here now formed where you can see uh, the flex that is happening at that neck joint. So. I think we're clear to keep going. Let's go ahead and take it all the way up to 59 pounds of pressure. So at 59 pounds of pressure, we are seeing uh, 0.429, so 429 thousandths of an inch, roughly 7 sixteenths uh, of an inch uh, of movement here in the headstock. Uh, everything went well. I think we 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 got a good test with that. Uh, you see here we've got you know a decent sized gap uh, in movement there, um, but I think as far as I can tell, everything worked well. Like there wasn't any cracking or or creaking or anything in the neck. So um, I, I think we've got a good test. So as I start to look at these numbers, um, they look pretty good. I start to see a, a very a linear response. So we're, we're seeing a, a very even response of movement as we apply each pound of pressure. And I think that speaks to why uh, most would use something like mahogany or Spanish cedar uh, for a neck is because it does have a very predictable uh, kind of a response. So you can see here as we, we apply you know, the, the pounds of pressure, you get a little bit of a, uh, of a belly here uh, in the curve as we start to apply pressure, but really from about 15 pounds of pressure on, we're seeing a, a very even response. Uh, looks like it, looks like we're getting seven thousandths of an inch on average for every pound of pressure applied. Okay, well, let's go ahead and reset and go ahead and put the one piece neck on there and let's see what we get. We are now loaded up with the one piece neck ready to do the same exact test. So we're going to get the scale initialized here without any weight on it. And we're going to go same thing, pound for pound, all the way up to 40 pounds. We'll stop, take a look at things and assess, and then take it again up to 59 pounds. So here we go. Okay, we've hit 40 pounds. So that's our light gauge set of strings pressure. Uh, and so let's take a look at the numbers. What is happening here? 
On the scarf jointed neck, at 40 pounds of pressure, we were at 270 thousandths of an inch. On the one piece neck, I'm at 236 thousandths of an inch. Okay. Let's keep going. Okay. It's going to 41 pounds of pressure. That is 59 pounds of pressure, uh, the equivalent of a heavy gauge set of strings. And let's take a look at the numbers. Okay, we've got, wait, these numbers don't make any sense. Uh, mathematically, they make sense. Uh, but the way that the two necks are performing doesn't make any sense. So we started off like within the first 11 pounds, 12 pounds of pressure, the, the necks are performing uh, almost identically. But once we get past about 12 pounds of pressure, we see, we see the two necks start to differ in the way that they perform. They're both bending in a linear response, so meaning it's a very predictable curve uh, or amount of, of deflection that we see as we apply pressure. But according to the numbers, I'm actually seeing less bending, less deflection on the one piece neck. And you know, as you get to the end of the chart, like that, that gap widens. Um, yeah, let, let me take a look at these numbers for a second. And then let's, let's do some analysis. I'm wondering if your brain's a little confused in the same way that mine is. We've spent all this time talking about short grain versus long grain, and I think, you know, a fairly good understanding of which one of those is stronger. And so these results aren't quite aligning to what we would have expected. So let's go take a look at those numbers a little bit more and see if we can come to a conclusion on this. So these results are pretty fascinating when you start looking at the numbers. Like we were talking about before, within the first uh, 12 pounds of pressure, we see pretty much an identical response from both necks. But really, it starts to get interesting at that 12 pounds of pressure mark. Uh, as you can see here, uh, both lines, like we were talking about, uh, they're, they're both pretty linear, but you see at that 12 pounds of pressure mark, you, you see them make a distinct change uh, in how they respond. And unlike what I think we were believing the results would be, we're actually seeing that the single piece neck is, is responding with a more stiff deflection response than the scarf joint all throughout. There, there is no point when we see that come back in or take a, a different curve. We see the one piece neck perform differently uh, and I would say better than the scarf jointed neck. So here we take a look at the, at the numbers. I, I kind of summed them all up. Uh, so on average per pound of pressure uh, on the scarf jointed neck, we see seven thousandths of an inch. On the one piece neck, we see six thousandths of an inch, which only amounts to you know, a thousandth of an inch per pound of pressure, which doesn't sound like much, but when you start looking at the, that from a numbers perspective, that's over 14% difference in the response between the two necks. And then when you look at the light gauge, when we stopped at that 40 pounds of pressure or around 135 pounds of string pressure, the, the deflection that we were seeing on the scarf joint at that point was, was 0.27, so a little over uh, a quarter of an inch. And then on the one piece neck was, was 0.236. Uh, so uh, again, at the light gauge string uh, deflection amount, we're seeing a 12, a little over 12 and a half percent uh, better response out of the single piece neck. And if you move then up to the heavy gauge string deflection, again, that's representative of around 200 pounds of pressure. We stopped at 59 pounds of vertical pressure. 
the scarf joint uh, was at 0.429 inches, the one piece at 0.371. So you're looking at a difference of you know 58 thousandths of an inch, which is a little over 13 and a half percent uh, better response from the single piece neck. So uh, just not at all what I expected to see. I I'm kind of blown away uh, at what these numbers have shown. Well, that certainly didn't turn out like I thought it was going to. I made the comment earlier that I think we all come into this with a set of firmly held beliefs. I know that I certainly did. I've been building scarf jointed necks since day one. And I probably came to that conclusion the same way that many of y'all did. I did some research and ultimately learned about short grain versus long grain and came to the conclusion that the maintaining that long grain would be the best method of building a neck. Like many things in life, challenging your assumptions from time to time can be a good idea. I don't think we would have many of the innovations we do today without it. Man, I would love to know your thoughts as you went along this journey with me. Like, does it change the way that you build going forward? Does it change the assumptions that you have about the building process? Hey, that is it for this series. Thanks for coming along the journey with me. I'm looking forward to, hang on a second.